Welcome back to PlaySci Studios, everyone. Today I'm going to be showing you how to combine your analog gear with your Fractal AX8 once again by playing your real tube amp through your AX8. And I don't mean playing your AX8 through a tube amp in four cable method. I already covered that in a video not too long ago that you're welcome to check out if that's the use case you're looking for. I'm talking about taking your real amplifier and substituting it for the amp block in your signal chain. That way you can use the digital cab block, you can use all of your effects and still play through headphones, play through front of house, your monitors, whatever you want. Now admittedly, the Fractal Axe Effects is actually going to be the better pairing for this use case, though it absolutely works with the AX8 as well. That way you can rack mount the Axe Effects right underneath your real amplifier, take it with you on live shows if that's what you want to do, or keep it all in one tidy space if you're just doing this for recording. But again, this absolutely works with AX8, just with a little bit more limitation. So there are plenty of reasons why you may want to have this set up for yourself. For me personally, I'm going to be mimicking the way that Meshuggah have set up their real amplifiers with their Axe Effects on tour, uh, promoting the Violent Sleep of Reason, their most recent album. And that is to use the real amplifier, the Fortin 33 pedal, and now the Fortin Zool noise gate on the rhythm sound. And all the other sounds, lead, clean, derivatives thereof, are going to be coming from the Axe Effects. But using this, I can still run it through the AX8, use the integral cab block, and then when I switch to leads and all that good stuff, then everything will be coming from the AX8. And that's just another way to utilize real gear. Say you have an amplifier that's not in the Fractal Audio firmware, or you just have one that just has that sound. It's perfect. There's nothing you want to change about it, but you still want the versatility of the AX8. You could absolutely have it. On paper, the setup shouldn't be really that much more complicated than four cable method, but in reality, it can get a lot more cluttered. So in my case, I want to be pairing my Randall Thrasher with real pedals and that's kind of a big selling point to me on this setup is being able to pair real pedals with obviously your real amp and have it played nicely with the other effects and the axe effects so i'm going to be using the fortin 33 overdrive the fortin zool noise gate and that's already going to add a little bit of wiring and clutter but even if you just run your tube amp without any pedals you're just going to use everything digitally coming from the ax8 you're still going to have a couple more leads than normal. Before we get to connecting anything else, I want to reiterate the same message I always say when dealing with tube amps. Make sure to plug in some type of load into your speaker jack, whether it be 4, 8, 16 ohm, something that is reactive that simulates the type of response that a speaker creates when plugged into your amplifier. And if you want to take full advantage of this setup, I would suggest having some type of DI box, some type of load box solution that allows you to record silently. Now I do have a dummy load box, but it doesn't have any other DI out. Fortunately, the Randall Thrasher also has the raw output, which is tapped off of the speaker jack just at a much lower level, so you can safely connect it to any other electronics. Unfortunately, I don't think this load box sounds worth a damn compared to the real thing, and I'm not talking about the speakers, the sound coming out of those. I'm talking about the raw output. The responsiveness, the dynamics between the two are that different. So if you have a higher quality DI box or something like, a, you know, again, a two notes captor, hopefully it'll sound a bit better uh, in my case, I'm just going to muffle these speakers the best I can and uh, take out the raw line output. And again, if you don't have a raw line out on your amplifier, you will need some type of DI box, something to interface between your AX8 and amplifier. Assuming you get that taken care of, let's get to plugging in some more cables. Obviously, plug your guitar into the instrument end of your AX8. You'll then take the effects send of your AX8 and plug it into your amplifier or plug it into whatever comes first. If you are using real pedals, I'm going to put it through my overdrive and then through the amplifier itself. This is where things get different from the four cable method. Rather than going from effects send to input, then effects send to return and out to effects send, we're going to bypass the loop of the amplifier completely. This means you could put all kinds of stuff in the effects loop of your real amp if you want to. In my case, I'm going to be using a real noise gate pedal. Instead of all of that, we're going to take the raw output, like I talked about earlier, or the DI box output, if you have something similar connected, and we're going to take that and put it into the effects return of the AX8. And then from there, your output options are limitless. You can go SBDIF into your computer's interface if you'd like, which is what I'm doing. You can go out to a flat, uh, full range flat response cabinet or monitors, whatever you want, 
and this is a big part of the versatility that I love about this setup. You can take a real tube amp and play it through whatever you want silently if you have the right equipment. So with that, let's let the tubes warm up and jump into Axe Edit, and I'll show you how I set up this patch. Let's go ahead and walk through this patch before I get a noise complaint filed by one of my neighbors. And uh, this should be linked in the description this time. I've been forgetting to put a lot of these patches under, so if I happen to, just please let me know, and uh, I'll upload it to the Dropbox. But this patch contains eight different scenes. It contains two XY amps, and it looks complicated, but it's really, really not. Um, so if you get rid of a lot of this noise here that I have made for the lead and clean presets, it really boils down to one trick. So I kind of wish you could rename blocks just for this purpose, you know, temporarily within just one um, preset because it'd be really nice to say instead of amp x it says fas modern or you know some acronym thereof and amp y it would say um, whatever we have here usa clean because i would really like to rename the effects loop block randall the real amp we're using because that's essentially what this is we're substituting another amp block in parallel here and it doesn't have to be in parallel um, i'm doing it <clears throat> i'm doing it this way voice crack like a 13 year old doing it this way for um, clarity's sake. So you can put these in series and just do the same thing, but instead of muting, have one bypass into the other. But practically what we're doing is um, anything before is gonna go into your amplifier or whatever is in front of your amplifier. So I have the Fortin 33 pedal going into it for my overdrive, which is why I have the drive block disengaged here. This is just to modify the uh, clean signal on my guitar a little bit. And uh, then it goes directly into the amp block comes out into a volume block, which shouldn't be there if you set this up correctly. Again, um, don't have a load box that sounds as good as it as the amp head does plugged into a cabinet. And because of that, I can't record at optimum volumes. So I'm using that to, uh, to just boost the volume into the AX8. Afterwards, I have a gate, which is not being used as a, a traditional gate. So unfortunately, with the way I have this set up, um, it is, you know, having quite a bit of background noise, so you'll hear it here. And uh, that's because I'm digitally boosting the volume, and so, you know, the noise floor is a, a bit high, but I'm using that to kill it. Um, fortunately, the Fortin Zool being in the effects loop of the uh, Thrasher is taking care of the actual noise gate part of it, so I don't need to worry about that. A little bit more modification, just a little bit of boost in the, ho the lows and highs into a cab and into an enhanced block, which I'm just using for this video. If you know, you're recording with this kind of stuff, turn that off and um, play with the cabs as you wish. But this is what it sounds like through the real amp. Again, the way I'm recording this isn't a silent setup, but you could absolutely put a load and DI box onto your amplifier and make this silent like a lot of touring bands are doing currently with their real amps when they combine them with uh, digital gear. So I got that in scene one. Uh, scene five above it is just a little bit of a, a mixture on that. This is just a little bit of a, a lead using the real amp and uh, change the cabinet type, change, or at least the cabinet, yeah, the cabinet type here, impulse response, put a chorus delay. Um, all that good stuff if you want to use the amplifier for more than just your rhythm sound you can do that and of course you can change all these blocks as you see fit um, I've got these set up kind of into columns as to what they are using in terms of, uh, of the amplifier for scene two this is using kind of just of a comparison with the digital amp so I'm using the FAS modern 3 one of my favorites and um, this should be Yes, this should be a through. That shouldn't be there, so that was a mistake. <laughs> Apologies for that. 
Um, matter of fact, well, uh, well, it's muted beforehand. That's why it didn't make a difference. Anyway, this is kind of the digital replacement of the last scene. So instead of using the Thrasher, we're using the Modern 3. And uh, instead of the Fortin 33, we're using my own kind of homemade Fortin 33 clean boost uh, derivative. So we're using the FET boost null instead of uh, having a clip type and boost the mids just a little bit, drive tone level mix all the way to the max, and it gets a very, very similar result. Now in this instance, I was able to get pretty damn close between the Modern 3 and the Thrasher, um, but it doesn't really surprise me considering the Modern 3 is basically a perfected rectifier design without you know all the fizziness and uh, boominess in the bottom end and the versatility of the Thrasher, the way you can dial in the uh, the different gain stages and all that, I can you know can get it pretty close. So it's uh, kind of comforting to know that there's at least a somewhat digital equivalent of it in here. So that's scene two. Of course, you can replace it, whatever. But basically what this allows you to do is have multiple rhythm sounds, or you can just dedicate this to a lead if you'd like. Um, scene three, we're using the Modern 3 again, but I'm using... Uh, more of a lead setup, so I switched out my clean boost for a tube screamer, and we've got a uh, different cabinet model as well as a little bit of delay in between the two to uh, get a little bit of phasing going on. Chorus and delay. Um, if you want your lead to be your amplifier, then you know your real amplifier. Then of course you could put a different drive in front of it. You can play with the EQ after if that's what you want, which is you know another option here for your PEQ block. Um, you might be a little bit, a little more limited like I am if you're using a real overdrive in front of the amp though, uh, because you won't be able to boost it quite as much, um, in fear of, you know, having too much noise. But if you are just plugging directly into your real amp and going to be using a drive block all the time anyway, then, you know, you'll have a little bit more versatility there and see what this sounds like. <laughs> So a little bit of that ultra modern liquid lead sound that I really like over more genty uh, aggressive rhythm stuff. And then scene four, this is kind of a super clean, more clean than I probably would normally do. Um, and a little bit of course delay playing with the X and Y blocks again. Scenes seven and eight above them are, again, derivatives of the lower two scenes, because I like to work in columns. Uh, seven, just a little bit different on the lead. Um, a little bit less gain, because I just switched back to the FET boost. And for this, um, I lowered the volume here on the volume block to get a lower gain effect, and then put it through a tube screamer. And this gets a little bit more dirtiness compared to uh, scene four, so... And I think we skipped scene six here, which is just a lower gain version of scene two. So this is just with the volume block engaged. And I have only one and a half out of 10 volume again, like I did on scene eight. And that's just to take away a little bit of the crunch. Um, if you still want to retain the tone of your high gain amp, but you know, there's certain sections that you don't want all the gain. <laughs> So that's basically how I would set up a real amplifier in the effects chain of a fractal audio device. If you have an Axe FX, you'll have even more options. Of course, you can run parallel 
uh, amp blocks. You know, you have two of those, so that would give you two more virtual channels to play with. If you have uh, a MIDI capable amplifier or a switch gizmo, you can play with the clean channel or other channels on your real amps. So, you know, you could add so many different channels and sounds to, uh, to each one of these scenes if you have the gear for it. Um, for me, two amp blocks will, or, you know, at least X, Y amps will get me through 90% of the material I play and then having my rhythm sound come from the effects loop from a real amplifier pretty much covers everything for me. Um, I, I kind of like to be a little limited uh, because as soon as I get into that, like I can have six or seven amp channels and even more drive pedals and all that, then I start to, you know, get lost in just the uh, screwing around with settings. So I kind of like to just have a stopping point and say, okay, this is where I'm at. And uh, this does this really wonderfully for me. So that about does it. Hopefully this will help you play with some of your favorite gear, either silently through digital means or, you know, just recording, however you want to uh, apply this little preset here. And um, have any other suggestions, please leave them below and let me know how it works out for you. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.